Boop. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yep. Okay. Um, is there a speech drop code? Uh, yeah, I'm going to make one now. I, I okay. know that Taller uses speech drop, so I'm sure he's okay with it. Okay. I think we might still be waiting on a judge. But... Yeah, that seems about right. Because we got Perk and... Yeah, uh, no, we've got uh, Lila, we've got Alex, we've got me. That's, that's three. Oh, cool, cool. Sounds good. And you all are sidelocked? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll be asked, so... Okay, three, three. Uh, B-A-C. Okay. Semis. Got my cat up. Okay, I'm uh, ready now. Uh, Alicia, you're on F, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I think everybody's here because uh, Justin and Lila are um, on the panel as well. I am in an area with relatively low connectivity, so I won't have my camera on. I'll mute my mic. But um, yeah. Same. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am a two person forensic household, so my partner is also judging. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I keep my camera off. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm in a I'm in a very rural place right now, and I'm... <laughs> does anyone yeah, like does anyone really have any questions, pain. comments, yeah, or concerns? Oh wait, we only have one to bear. Oh, HC is the Hornet Cup stream bot. Okay, all right. Yeah, we only have one debater. We're waiting for the next okay. Tyler. That makes sense. Okay. Hello, so sorry I'm late. You're good. No worries. Oh, yeah. Good to see you again, Alicia. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, congrats to you as well. We got all three judges with, um, would either the debaters like to ask any questions of their panel? Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I, I read everyone's paradigms. So if there's anything like specific on the paradigms that you want to say is most important, or if there's anything that's changed, I'd love to hear that too. Um, I can't think of any like big things that have changed for me. Uh, yeah. Either for me, either. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, not that I. Not that I know of. Ex exactly right. Uh, 
Uh, and okay, I've got the A1, uh, the one AC in front of me. Okay. Tyler, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask or? Oh, no, I think I'm okay. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure before I like started or whatever. Uh, yep. Yeah, my, my biggest thing is my speed threshold for analytics is much low, is lower than my speed threshold for evidence. That's, okay, that's, are there any other reservations on speed for any of the judges? As long nope. as it's not abusive, I don't, yeah, you know, I mean, this okay. is an, it's an open round, so yeah, okay. I don't see why it would be, no. Okay, well, the 1AC is in the speech trunk. Um, I floated on five pages, but it's inherency, solvency, two advantages, and framing, so how do you like to flow that? Um, yeah, is is anyone not good, or Tyler, you good? Is everybody good? Okay. I am ready. Hit right. your opponent and the rest of the panels get ready. Okay. All right. Seeing as there are no objections, I will go ahead and begin. I recognize that I am on the kick up boy land. First, inherency, most people don't realize that tribes and families are split in half by the implementation of the northern border, but we need to pay attention now. This problem causes poverty and the disappearance of indigenous culture. Immediate passage of legislation to eliminate the blood quantum requirement will eliminate the primary barrier to border crossing for native peoples, kill number 18. Representatives introduced a bill that would end half central US immigration policy, which requires Native Americans to pre their blood quantum documents showing that at least 50% Native American recognition exercising their treaty protected right to fairly cross the US and Canada, requiring Native Americans to prove their blood quantum in order to exercise their treaty protected right to because and discriminatory this legislation is an important recognition of our inherent rights taxes around homelands. Uh, next, the plan resolved U.S. federal government should implement immigration reform. They remove substantial statutory restrictions on legal immigration into the U.S. by abolishing the federal blood quantum and allowing all indigenous Canadians to access their free passage rights under the Jay Treaty. Next, Solvency Native American organizations advocate the elimination of blood quantum restrictions on border passage. The National Congress of American Indians, 18, the National Congress of American Indians, to support the efforts of northern and southern border tribes to address implementation of the Jay Treaty provisions in Canada governing border crossing for all American Indian tribal and First Nations members and removal of the 50% blood quantum requirement in the United States. Move to the cultural genocide contention. First, blood quantum is an outdated strategy used to erase indigenous culture, continue the onslaught of anti-indigenous racism. Hodges 20, the blood quantum is largely seen as short sighted, just another enduring colonist notion that native communities are still facing today. Tribal identity didn't exist in the way it does today, didn't remain cultural rather than biological. It's participation in the community, not race, that made a person native. Federal policy began to use them to exclude um, individuals from privileges offered to authentic natives. Blood quantum became the requirement for legal natives at the same time that the government began promoting the programs of assimilation for indigenous peoples. If the native population legally disappears, then the government has no obligations to it. It communicates to the native that their existence must be justified in colonial terms. And border crossing is key to indigenous economies and culture. Day 2017. Trade economy, culture, and self-determination are vital to survival of indigenous nations. Their historical economy and trade have existed before there was a Canada-US border. Issues like southwood lumber, agriculture, gaming, communications are just some economic activities. The socioeconomic impacts on First Nations must be acknowledged as a matter of rights. New economies existing with just indigenous nations to drive side together an opportunity for intertribal trade indigenous peoples that divide by international boards have the right to maintain developed context relations and cooperation including activities for spiritual cultural political economic and social purposes the u.s must recognize the full spectrum of rights of first nations and tribes and trade equal sharing of the economic bounty of north america and genocide of native peoples constitutes social death rendering life meaningless brain 15. genocide is two phases one to start from the national pattern of the oppressed group the other imposition of the national pattern of the oppressor genocide is not simply mass murder the special evil of genocide lies its infliction of not just physical death but social death producing consequent meaninglessness of one's life and even of discrimination move to the physical genocide contention First, Native Americans have an extremely high death rate in North America. Fear 19, the research study shows alarming patterns in the mortality rates of status. First Nations peoples, First Nation girls between the ages of 15 and 19 are five times more likely to die than girls of that age in general. Canadian populations, boys were four times more likely to die than the general population. Standardized mortality rates have not changed in the past 30 years and may have even decreased for some groups increase for some age groups. This is due to abuse and lack of access to medical care, economic marginalization, systemic biases, issues are concerned in North America broadly. Blood quantum results in the physical death of natives in numerous ways. Link one, poverty and starvation, and chance border rate restrictions and racials continue to impair border crossing by native peoples, which in turn cause economic activity to decrease Fox 18. There's just making it easier for people living cross border communities to pass over the line and speeding up the flow of trade and services since the 18th century when Northern border was first hastily sketched. The boundary divides more than a dozen Native American tribes and conservative security border crossing disrupted international communities for decades to across the line of will families of Native Americans and employees of hospitals and small business and now find themselves confronted with impassable and hostile barrier and two the second link federally imposed blood quantum requirements a form of settler colonialism that rely on the genocidal logics of elimination jackson 20. genocide settler colonialism work on the logic of elimination by death force displacement or assimilation in order to open up lands for new settlement the socio-historical process in which racial identities are created lived out transformed um 
destroyed indigenous peoples were measured by blood quantum uh, the, the explicit federal to the blood quantum literally tribal and central tra responsibility tribes would eventually become distinguishable thus blood quantum was a critical tool for settler colonies of indigenous people needed to disappear in order to open up lands of resources for the whites and this genocide logic leads to lack of federal aid which is especially devastating in light of covid pushing natives deeper into poverty walker and cochran 20. the human and economic toll of the pandemic is particularly devastating for tribes across the country was already struggling with inadequate federal resources and are now among the most vulnerable and hardest hit by the virus the lawsuits and delay in providing the tribal aid represent the largest struggle over allocating the trillions of dollars congress approved as part of the stimulus package and and poverty is the worst from a structural violence of Bujamal 98. We live in a nation that condones and ignores wide-ranging wide structural violence of a kind that destroys human life with a breathtaking ruthlessness. By structural violence, I mean the increased rate, rates of death and disability suffered by those who occupy the bottom rungs of society. This form of violence is invisible to us, and because of its invisibility, all the more insidious. Every single year, two to three times as many people die from the poverty throughout the world as were killed by the Nazi genocide. This is, in effect, genocide on the weak and poor of every, every year of every decade throughout the entire world. Move on to the framing page. Extinction framing is a far-fetched privilege and silly abstraction that normalizes violence experienced by indigenous bodies that genocide is the real extinction, Mitchell 17. Extinction has become an emblem of Western fears about the end of the world, climate change, asteroid strikes, nuclear destruction. Extinction has become an empty superlative and abstract form of unthinkability. Extinction is not a metaphor, it is a very real expression of violence that systemically destroys particular beings. Extinction is an expression of colonial violence to genocides of indigenous people continue apace in contemporary settler states, transformed into multiple manifestations. Extinction is not a metaphor for genocide or other forms of large-scale violence. It is a distinct manifestation of genocide. Treating extinction as something short of genocide and trenches your centric understandings of personhood racialized people are more likely to suffer from the effects of extinction extinction is not a metaphor in many cases it's quite literally genocide enacted against indigenous people and their other than human relations thank you now for cross-examination okay uh three minutes okay is everyone ready if, if my uh judges don't say anything i'll assume you are I am, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So, first off, um, on the plan text, what part of the J Treaty gives Canadians access to free passage rights? Like, gives Indigenous people access to free passage rights? Um, I honestly like I don't remember the number of the statute, but I definitely have it like in my back files. I can go look. But um, no, that's that's okay. <laughs> You're okay, good. I'm sorry. I just don't remember like the six numbers that it is. Yeah, you're good. So, can you clarify for me what exactly the plan does? Like, I get the removing blood quantums, but the second part. There is no second part. All it does is abolish, like, by abolishing the blood quantum, right? Yeah, I guess what does that do? Yeah. yeah so, okay. So, the federal blood quantum mandates that you prefer, like, pr prove to the U.S. government that you have 50% indigenous blood in order to be considered as an indigenous person under the United States federal government's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get rid of this criterion that you have to meet of this federal blood quantum, you are allowed these free passage rights. And when they signed the Jay Treaty, like, centuries ago, um, they said that indigenous people, like, can have their free passage rights. Okay. So... I guess is the reason that indigenous people should have these free passage rights because this is their land, right? That's the contention. I mean, yeah. Okay. Cool. I was just clarifying. Also because it's like, you know, like causing mass death culturally and physically. Yeah, so when you talk about cultural genocide, can you define mm -hmm. that? Like, like yeah, social death. What is social death? Yeah, so we're talking about when people like have like the destruction of their culture, like when they're not, they're no longer able to access their culture. And like specifically the um, day 2017 card talks about how like these cultures, like the spiritual cultural like gatherings are so vital to like the like tribal life in indigenous peoples. Okay, but in what way can indigenous peoples not access their culture now that removing the blood quantum allows them to? Right. So specifically in the day 2017 card, it talks about how they can no longer like access these like spiritual and cultural grounds and that some of the tribes are actually divided like literally in half. That's also our Kilmer 18 card. It talks about how like families are separated. OK, is that in all instances? I mean, like in terms of like the Mohawk Nation, which is like one of the tribes we're like talking about, there is literally like like a like a border is like cutting right through it. And then also, of course, this is unhighlighted and I apologize for that. And the day 2017 card talks about the Potawatomi people and how mm -hmm. like they're on both sides of the St. Clair River. Okay. Um, that's basically all the time. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take a few seconds of prep. 
starting now. I don't know if you need this information at all, but it's section three of the J Treaty. Okay, thanks. Um, and that was 310. I have 310 left. I used 50 seconds. Oh, thanks, Justin. Um, and I'll upload the doc now. Uh, how many pages? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be two off in any case. Uh, or I lied. Three off in any case. Sorry. No, you're fine. Is it just case and order? Um, yeah, it'll mostly be solvency. Okay, cool. In terms of where you need to be on the floor. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, I have it up. Okay, cool. So is everyone ready? Uh, give me a second. Sorry. Word opens really slow for me. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just on you. Okay, there we go. Okay, you good? All right, then I will get started unless someone stops me. All right. First off, it's T. Blood Quantum, they're not legal immigration. A, legal immigration means LPR. There are three broad categories. Chang et al. in 2004. Legal immigration is defined as law persons lawfully admitted for permanent residence into the U.S. The Immigration Act establishes limits for three classes of immigrants, family-sponsored uh, preferences, employment-based preferences, and diversity immigrants. B, violation. J-treaty recipients are legally distinct from LPR. The USIS website says a record of admission for permanent residence will be created if an American Indian born in Canada wishes to reside permanently. This statement uh, seems to recognize that the exercise of the free passage right is distinct from choosing to live permanently in the U.S. C, standards. One limit. There are all sorts of exceptions to the typical immigration process. LPR gives the IAF lots of ground while giving the uh, negative a clear set of cases to ground. Many core negative arguments linked to the visa process, backlogs, visa critiques, and politics links. Uh, three, bright line. LPR gives a uh, clear set of cases the negative can be prepared to debate. D, voters. One, topicality is designed to create a predictable and fair set of cases the negative can be prepared to debate on their merits. And two, extra topicality as a voter it is unpredictable and proves the resolution is insufficient. Second, T is remove means cancel, not modify. A, interpretation, removing the context of restriction means cancel, not modify or replace. OED in 2012. 20. To cancel or lift the restriction of tax, etc., to get rid of, to put an end to. B, violation. The AF uh, replaces the blood quantum. C, standards. One limit. The, there are around 30 visa types, each of the many restrictions, allowing the affirmative to change any ER restriction, multiplies the number of cases exponentially. Two, ground. The topic has a massive advice in the literature to win compelling links. The AF needs to make a radical break from the status quo, not just tweak something. Three, contextual evidence that the plan revises, not eliminates. Spruhan in 2009. One possibility might be for Congress to revise the pre pre uh, free passage statute, excuse me, and eliminate the blood quantum requirement. Congress might replace blood quantum with a different definition. D voters. Top, uh, you can just cross apply the voters from the above T. Now go to the Sharma case. The first contention is that the affirmative justifies itself by saying that indigenous people have a primordial claim to this land that justifies their right to migration. This framework empowers forms of colonial violence that we are already seeing all around the world, uh, Sharma in 2020. Claims to uh, autochthony are meta metaphysical and as such deeply politicizing of the exclusion they produce, drawing upon historical studies showing uh, how imperial states deployed autochthonous discourses to divide those that they are categorized as natives and migrants from one another in an effort to maintain their imperial rule. I showed the continuities of such practices in a post-colonial new world order contemporary nationalist discourses of autochthonies cannot succeed in realizing decolonization precisely because of their reliance on modes of political, economic, and social exclusion based on the separation of people categorized as either native or migrants. Just as racism was central to colonial practices, so too was anti-racism central to anti-colonial struggles. Today's efforts to narrow the definition of anti-racism to something that may, uh, takes away from anti-colonial struggles is an active disavowal of the deep connections between racism and colonialism. The view of anti-racism is only important to those that are negatively racialized people who are not also classified as native as part of how the definition of colonialism has been 
been expanded to include, include all people. This is evident in the increasingly popular uh, efforts to remake people categorized by the state as migrants into settler colonialists. Burmese uh, Buddhists and the uh, state are actively engaged in genocidal practices against Rohingya uh, who have uh, been represented as migrants and as such colonizers. Next. The affirmative's call for border reform is ideological. It cannot be separated from its work to create subjectivities. Sharma in 2009. Any study of national borders needs to start with the recognition that they are thoroughly ideological, whether while they were presented as uh, filters sorting people into desirable and non-desirable, skilled and unskilled, genuine and bogus, worker, wife, refugee, etc. National borders are better analyzed as molds as attempts to uh, recreate certain types of subjects and subjectivities. They place people in new types of power relations with others, and they impart particular kinds of subjectivities as far-reaching implications is not simply restricted to the event of the, uh, crossing a territorial border. Walsh's fear of a thousand petty fortresses that he predicted would uh, attend a borderless world is already being realized. The alternative is to reject approaches focused on justifying migration on the basis of primordial land claims. The USFG should abolish borders for the purposes of migration. Sharma in 2009. Historians, archaeologists, biologists, and tales of the people tell all point to the fact that around the world human beings have always moved and they have done so for reasons not dissimilar to the reasons people move today. Yet in most nationalist narratives, the people are seen as attached to particular lands in ways that are either primordial or providential. The invention of human sedentarism or doctrines of manifest destiny rest on problematic assumptions about what migration actually is and who engages in it. Uh, what distinguishes a no borders politics from other immigrant rights uh, approaches is their refusal to settle for fair immigration policies. No, within a no borders politics, it is understood that the border control practices of national states not only reflect people's uh, unequal rights, but also produce this inequality. And finally, on the K, the 1AC's framing establishes meaning and limits the range of political action. It cannot be separated from the plan text. Frameworks Institute in 2005. Framing refers to the construct of communication and the way it signals how to interpret and classify new information. By framing, we mean how messages are encoded with meaning so that they can efficiently uh, be interpreted in relationship to existing beliefs or ideas. Frames trigger meaning. The questions we ask in applying the concept of frames to the arena of social policy are as follows. What is the public discourse on the issue? How do these frames affect public choices? How, how can an issue be reframed to evoke a different way of thinking, one that illuminates a broader range of uh, alternative policy choices? The, this approach is strategic in that it not only deconstructs the dominant frames of reference that drive reasoning on uh, public issues, but it also identifies those alternative frames that are most likely to stimulate public reconsideration and enumerates their elements. Now on to case with solvency. They don't do what their solvency advocate says. They just end the blood quantum, but don't offer an alternative. This means no one meets the requirements and you should vote negative on presumptions. Spruhan in 2009. One possibility might be for Congress to revise the free passage statute and eliminate the blood quantum requirement. Congress might re replace the blood quantum uh, with a different definition, perhaps tied to uh, Canada's uh, 1982 constitution, which uses the term Aboriginal Peoples of Canada. Next. The plan increases travel, causing people to get detained. Smith in 2017. The stakes for a Jake Chidi migrant are very high. No visa, possibly no green card, maybe even no passport, and runs the risk of being misidentified as undocumented. Even a uh, government employee who lacks formal discretion can alert a Jake Chidi migrant caught in a traffic stop might find himself in jail. Next, the conditions are awful in detention. Brennan Center in 2021. COVID-19 poses a grave threat to those in immigration custody. The conditions of some of these facilities are deplorable, and it would be unconscionable to place additional people into these facilities absent an extraordinary reason. Additionally, they don't get rid of blood quantums. It is still used for a ton of things by the USFG. Finch in 2016. Indigenous people receive benefits of health and education, among other things. A blood quantum is a tool for the uh, federal government for the tribes who uh, to decide who can claim these benefits. Next, turn. The current system is grounded in white supremacy, ensures the AF can't solve. Irfani in 2020. Reform is not enough because the system is not broken. It's designed to uphold white supremacy. Calls for piecemeal immigration reform have long installed calls for sweeping meaningful change. Immigration laws and policies are rooted in white supremacy. And finally, Immigration controls are a form of colonialism. Indigenous people can just cross on their own. NPR in 2017. Aquasis may um, have to uh, cross the border legally just to get from one side of the reservation to the other. It is not uh, just a hassle, says co-editor of the Aquasis Ne um, based uh, newspaper. It is a violation of her sovereignty as a native person. I have a US passport, but I'll be damned if I use a passport coming uh, into my own territory, she says. And with that, I conclude my speech and I'm open for cross. Okay, cool. All right. I will assume everyone's ready then. Okay, let's begin. Uh, is the K alt is it conditional? Um, yeah, the K alt is conditional. Yes. Okay, let's actually talk about the alt then. So, like, okay, how how does the work is how does it work? Is like the material action just abolishing borders? Like, I see we're it's rejecting. So it's abolishing borders, like the material action is abolishing borders, but only for the purposes of migration. So not abolishing borders in its entirety, just for the purposes of immigration. Okay, so like under the all, like people like are still technically classified, these indigenous people are still technically classified as immigrants? No, 
No, that's like not wow. the all. Like the separatism, like the, one of the links to the plan is the separatism of um, migrants and indigenous people that is predicated on connecting indigenous peoples to like land claims. We abolish borders for the purposes of migration so that immigrants aren't like delegated in this fashion or okay. indigenous peoples aren't de delegated in this fashion. And then like on a broader aspect, mm -hmm. um, like what else does the K like claim to solve for? Yeah, well, we well our argument is that tying indigenous people to land is inherently problematic, connected to like genocidal logics and colonial violence. We solve that better than the affirmative. Okay. And then like how like how is this going to happen? Like how are we going to see the borders abolished? Uh, I like would are say, you just fiating it or Yeah, yeah, I would say fiat and normal means check. Okay. And then on the the T removes? Yep. Like, how are we an alteration and not like a cancellation? Well, because you um, add an addendum to the rule. And if you don't, then you don't solve. So like, I, it's a double, it's like a double bind. Either you're not topical or you don't solve. Wait, oh, okay, okay, on the case argument. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on LPR specifically, like would a green card meet like the interpretation? So our Smith 2017 evidence says J Treaty recipients specifically are distinct from LPR. It's not necessarily predicated on green cards. Okay. And then, sorry, um, move to the the like white supremacy turn on the case. Yep. Like, how is this a turn? Like, what? Like, I understand. Like, I agree with you. Like, the yep. state like has like ties in it that like definitely uphold white supremacy, especially the history. But mm -hmm. like, how does this, like, how does this change the AF? Like, where does the AF claim to solve for like white supremacy? Yeah, no, no, no. So that's my fault. Um, the tag is kind of misleading. It's more like a solvency takeout. Like the immigration okay. system is inherently white supremacist. And that means that the AF can't solve multiple causes is basically the argument. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Uh, that's time, thank you. Um, I will go ahead and start my web now. Stop prep, 135 taken. Okay, Matt, that's, thank you, Justin. <laughs> okay, I'm putting it in. Okay, it should be in there. Okay, give me a second to download. Mm -hmm. um, and while you're downloading, it's going to be T on top. We're actually going to do the T remove on top and then TLPR. Then we'll do um, solvency, physical genocide, cultural genocide framings, and then the critique. Wait, could you repeat the order one more time? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it's going to be T remove on top. 
TLPR solvency and then like case and order so physical genocide cultural genocide and then the critique And then is everyone ready? Yep, ready. Okay. Now we'll assume everyone else is ready. And I will begin on first. Put this on both T pages. One drop rule. This isn't a uh, one drop rule DA. Their topic of the argument is just like the one drop rule, where including even one of them affirmative that doesn't meet their ideas of what a topical ass should be makes the entire topic unredeemable. These are the same logics that allow for the racialized violence of exclusion that are forced upon indigenous folks. Next, the blood pollution DA. These are their arguments about including this uh, discussion of dignity ruins and otherwise good topic ignores the endemic problems with this topic and debate as a whole. I.e., only using USFG as an actor and forcing debaters to comply with the norms of white academia while talking about immigration. They normalize the mess up parts of the activity by making my app the scapegoat. Move to like first term move. One, we meet. We remove the federal blood quantum, read the plan text, abolish the federal blood quantum. There's no magnification. We don't have any Congress, like congressional revisions. We move this, remove this statute. Um, like here's the definition of remove means to eliminate Oxford 20, eliminate or get rid of. We meet our interview, eliminate a lawfare ground, any dissents, critiques or counterpoints that leak to the act of removing any restriction on legal immigration will leak to the act contextually accurate. Our definition is readily usable to describe restricting the context of immigration policy and topic. Allegations should be about our competing interpretations are bad. It creates a race to the bottom. It is infinitely regressive and uh, justifies counter interpretation only. Our case topical good is good enough. Reasonability is key to check unpredictable neg definitions, check the next block bias, and there's no objective way to reconcile competing interpretations. See, potential abuse is not about it's infinitely regressive and leads to gender intervention, might make them pr pr prove in round abuse. Like people are coming into the United States, regardless, this will like, apply to any DA that deals with like more people coming into the US. Like there's no ground loss. Move on to LPR. We need indigenous natives who wish to reside in the US are given permanent residence card even without the card. They have the LPR status, but getting the green card solidifies it. Even if they don't stay here all the time, they still have LPR status in the US. USCIS and D, if you live in the United States and American natives who are born in Canada and because at least 50% American indigenous blood, you may obtain a permanent residence card by requesting a creation of record and kind of interpretation legal immigration reference anyone his legal status or immigrant. The INA defines immigrant by exclusion of not permitted to be one of the non-immigrant abuse categories. People considered immigrants by the default Spain use doesn't the classification made by systems of immigrant or non-immigrant. The I enable states every alien not falling in those categories considered immigrant non-immigrants are primarily tourist individuals on business trips. Immigrants are regarded from the outside as intending to remain in the United States, identified to live and work on a permanent basis. So sorry to make you do this on your flow, but please cross apply like the same like standards and voters. Additionally, like I'm gonna go ahead and like look at their like standards and voters. Um they say we're extra tea. There's absolutely no way we're extra tea. Like already this is a thing in the status quo, like indigenous people are given green cards. Like this is just this just exists in the status quo. It's not altered by the plan. It just exists. Uh, predictable. The INA checks that this is immigration legislation. Um, bright line. Like we're more bright line here with just anyone with a green card. Like yes or no. Limits and ground. The, once again, the INA checks this. It's just people coming into the United States. That's going to be absolutely any generic DA link. Move on to solvency. Skip the overview. Uh, they talk about like how we can't solve because of these, like, there's no alternative. This isn't true. Tribal membership cards are normal means of enforcement. Turn rule 08. To invoke the tree rights of the board, they must present a blood card letter letters off from present along with the status card, you know, right, federally recognized photo ID that can be advantage to members. You need to show your 50% that's already become tricky. If you can't prove it, you go to court. Bans and tribes have asked the US government to recognize the cards they issue their members. This means this is what's going to happen in the world post AF. Then they talk about, like, detainees in detention. Um, natives are not detained at the northern border. Like, this isn't true. You extend the NCAA. AI18 National Congress of American Indians card. They're asking for this policy to be passed that, like, they, like the harms happening right in the status quo are worse. Um, then they say that BQ is used right now. This isn't true. Like this is only about tribes in currently in the United States, like dealing with like benefits. This has nothing to do with the AF. Um, and like specifically that we're aiming to solve the problem with immigration. Like that's why we're topical. Uh, then they read this like solvency takeout on white supremacy. There's no impact to this. The state is inherently racist. That's true. Like this doesn't change the outcome of the AF. Then they say that this is like a form of colonialism, like immigration restrictions are. That's true. Let's abolish them. Like this is like immigration restrictions are colonial like cool let's abolish them that's what we're doing great okay cultural genocide to extend the social death impact on Breen 15 physical genocide of Bujamal 98 poverty is the worst form of structural violence and it comes first extend it through framing you prefer the Mitchell 17 card here because an external extinction impacts on obstruction and away ignore the ongoing extinction of indigenous peoples move to the K where I'm gonna spend most of my time okay first um, I want to answer the framing first. Um, the framing, like, our framing doesn't limit whatsoever. There's, like, no link on this card or this argument whatsoever about why, like, our Mitchell 17 card limits, like, anything at all. Then, like, uh, also, like, in a world post-AF, um, what we're going to see, in a world post-K, excuse me, is that the United States federal government is still going to exist. The borders are just going to be abolished for immigrants. This means that these people, these indigenous people, are still going to have this horrible name of, like, 
it, like being immigrants, which is going to trigger the like the impacts are on our physical genocide um, um, contention, meaning they still can't solve for like the actual structural violence that's happening when it comes to these impoverished peoples. Okay, let's actually look at the like the document now. Okay, perm do plan and the, the critique smaller steps paved the way for broader acceptance of open borders. The alternatives attempt to wish trade borders is developed in a politics of universal friendship built upon the designation of an inhuman uh, an enemy, enabling endless violence. Rush three, the liberal attempt to construct a world of universal friendship produces new enemies. It has no both as poles, no clear distinction between what is inside and what is outside the community. Embrace all humans with no gates to city and real bar variants outside of not against humor. What does it wait towards on once the term used to describe the horizon of distinction also becomes a distinction it's positive pole and it's negative opposite. The negative pole can be something that lies beyond the horizon and antithetical to horizon and the political pol positive pole alike, only an unregenerate barbarian could fail to recognize the immutable uh, barriers of the liberal order, and borders are inevitable, the counterpoint of the all it fails, and borders are ontologically entrenched in human perception of difference, the one I see is not an apology for the status quo, but engages in an ethical act that resolves the problems of the status quo, Williams 3, it is impossible to engage in an ethical investigation of territory borders that reflects the ontological estimation, but does not have to become an apology for the status quo, it is impossible to assert territory borders that to the sovereignty of endured, resulting in our entrenched so those borders are representative of a need and division, and human ethical, the endurance of borders implies that borders and the need to create us, and our, there are powerfully entrenched in human relations and our ability to identify and understand ourselves cut the card ourselves perm critique k is plan plus borders critique looks to like yeah ignore the dissat part okay open borders results in human committed commodification 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 okay worsening global income inequality esco 15 open borders the recipe for the commodification human beings the principles economic empathy but move the, about the global dilemma of global capitalism is neither rational nor humanity systemic solution to uh, global wealth and equality rather than intellectual game is designed to promote exploitation and utopian uh, critiques are like Ill illegitimate open borders is an unworldly uh, utopian critique that will never occur in the real world removes focus from real world policy options like the app for which specific education is far more likely to affect social change voting issue for education like i can't provide any actual like policy like um like a uh, work against like the the alternative whatsoever about how it f functions or like prove any solvency deficits when it comes to going to the United States federal government. Thank you. All right, cool. Um, I'm gonna take my three cents. Wait, sorry, my timer. Okay, three cents starting now.
Um, okay. Yep, that's time. Uh, I'm not reading any new cards, so there's no new doc. Um, the order is going to be T remove. Um, and then, well, yeah, it'll just be the one drop rule DA and the blood pollution DA and then the RVI. Um, and then we can go to solvency uh, before we get to the K flow. Is everyone good with that? Cool, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, and if I don't get stopped, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Um, so just so that everyone's aware, it's going to be the T's and then like an overview before I get to um, the K proper. So after solvency, one, one, before I get to the K proper, I'll read an overview. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And here we go. Okay, on the one drop rule and the blood pollution DA, you can group both of these because their contentions are similar. Our argument on topicality is not that the entire topic is irredeemable or that discussing indigeneity uh, ruins the topic. It's that the AF and this plan specifically just aren't topical. It's a test of competition, but we'll concede that you are and extend the I meet. Drop the argument, not the team. Additionally, one, topicality is a voting issue and never a reverse voting issue because it is one of the stock issues the AF must prove to win the debate. Two, the negative needs to be able to read topicality to make sure the debate is fair. If the affirmative could win a reverse voting issue, it raises the stakes too high to run teeth. Three, T is not a time skew because if we weren't reading T, we would just read another argument the AF would have to answer. Um, okay, so there's no reason to vote on T, but I'll extend their I meets. Uh, we're not going, but there's a cross application to be made on T to the solvency flow. So go there now. All right, the first argument that's made on... Um, or one of the arguments that's made uh, in response to like the plan increases travel, there's not actually a response that's made to this. It's just that the app's harms outweigh, but you're still gonna um, flow across that um, the uh, plan increases immigrant travel, uh, that increases detainment and detention is awful. Like that is a structural violence link that it turns at least in some small way, the affirmative. But additionally, um, we say that uh, they their plan text doesn't get rid of all of the uh, blood quantum, that it is still used by the USFG. And they just said not true has nothing to do with the app. That's false. One, I'm the only person reading evidence in this round on this issue that um that they still use it for things like health and education. So um if you don't to like get rid of they just or they just eradicate blood quantums in terms of how it's used in um immigration, but they don't um absolve its use in other applications, which means that it's still like whatever harms that blood quantums as a whole have in terms of like their implications for colonialism are still still exist post plan, which means they don't solve. Um, additionally, my opponent only says that no impacts in response to my current system is grounded in white supremacy. But I made this argument and I made this articulation in cross that this is an alt-cause argument. If the entire system is rooted in white supremacy, the, in the app, um, one, my opponent uh, claims that in cross that the app doesn't claim to solve for this. And two, this is like directly implicated in colonial violence. And if you don't solve um, for like white supremacy and colonial violence, you don't solve your affirmative. Like all of these other things um, are gonna outweigh whatever solvency you're granting them for removing the blood quantum restriction. Additionally, um, my argument is that indigenous people can just cross now. And that that means um, that means that the app doesn't do anything. She doesn't respond to this argument. It means you vote neg on presumption for all of these mishandled um, solvency arguments. My opponent just says that, true, let's abolish them because immigration controls are a form of colonialism. But I make the articulation that this means that indigenous people can just cross on their own and the app does nothing. If the app does nothing, you vote neg on presumption. There are a myriad of reasons for you to vote down um, on solvency that are independent reasons um, like without respect to the K, but I'll go to the K flow now. So first, as an overview, the plan justifies itself by appealing to indigenous people's ancient right to exist on this land, which supersedes the right of any other migrant. This is an appeal to autochthony, not a broad call to the right of migration, but a specific exception located within a treaty. This is an awful starting point for the politics of migration. One, the claim that indigenous people have special rights of migration denies the universal right of migration. Our Sharma evidence shows that there is fundamentally zero sum relationship between these two politics. Two, the language and justifications of the 1AC will be co-opted 
by reactionary forces to justify genocide. This turns the entirety of the advantage uh, or the entirety of the affirmative. We are already seeing groups in Myanmar appeal to indigenous land claims when they commit violence against their Muslim minority populations. In the United States, this becomes the idea that indigenous people can freely travel, but those non-indigenous invaders from Central America and Canada need to be locked up in cages. The alternative, um, yeah, actually, um, even though the alternative resolves the entirety of case, I'm going to kick the alt. There was no condo red. There's no condo bad shell red. And there's no reason to reject on the basis of that. Like my opponent didn't read any theory, so I can um, totally do that. I'll answer the perm, though, just so that they don't get perm outweighs. One, the perm is unnecessary. The F removes all borders for migration. The affirmative tinkers with the treaty to grant special travel privileges to indigenous people grounded in autochthony. This means that the alternative solves all the offense of the permutation, but the perm, or the, all, yeah, the alternative solves all the offense of the permutation, but the permutation still links. The affirmative cannot escape their framing of the issue, which is grounded in autochthony. This framing delimits the possibility of action and undermines the, cap the capacity for the alternative to function. That is our framework institute evidence, which goes unrefuted. And then even if they can literally be done at the same time, the problematic attitudes inculcated in the 1AC will create violent attitudes toward non-Indigenous migrants. That is our Sharma evidence. So the um uh, the K like framework operates as a straight turn to the case and a disad to the case that means we win this debate. So the open borders results in human commodification uh, argument goes away. That that fact that uh, borders are inevitable uh, goes away, and the alternatives attempts to wish away borders um it goes away. Also, the utopian counterplans or illegitimate voter is overwhelmed by um the fact that we'll kick the alt like um. And running in one and two, the alternative is not utopian. Like we don't claim a perfect world, which is what a utopia is. We claim that, uh, and we don't claim open borders in the conventional sense. We claim open borders for the purposes of migration. Um, and we read like a solvency advocate that, that says that this is possible, which nullifies the utopian counterplan. There's nothing the way on the flow in terms of answers to the framework. Like the way that the uh, our argument is the way that the affirmative um, uses ties um, indigenous peoples to land is inherently problematic and linked to genocidal logics, uh, genocidal and colonial violent, colonial violent logics, um, which um, mean that they can never solve the harms of the affirmative, like the genocide of the affirmative. That's all of their advantages. But additionally, you can vote neg on all of the case stuff. Okay, 2.15, I'll start it now. Two twenty five, but who's counting?
It's time. Okay, um, just to make this easy, it's gonna be the solvency page and the critique. All my framework is gonna kind of be done on the K. Um, hopefully that like makes it the most clean and easiest to flow. Um, but yeah. And it's, there's gonna be no dog, it's all on flow. And then I assume everyone's ready. Okay. With that, let's go ahead and begin with a quick overview. What you're gonna find in this uh, this 2AR is that all the solvency attacks are going have actually been dropped, my answers, and you're gonna find that you're gonna be voting on the critique when it comes to what Native Americans want for this country and what they want for their travel. First, let's go into the solvency page specifically. They say that I dropped the tribal cards, like they, dro they I dropped that there's no alternative. This isn't true, they didn't flow me. The tribal cards are normal means. That's my card, the Turnbull Away card I read in the previous speech then. They say that I dropped immigration travel. This isn't true, I said, this is not specific, to the northern border and two i said the ncai 18 card that's the national congress of american indians that says they want the af if there is violence at the border then the violence that's going on right now is so horrible that these people want this blood quantum picked up and and, and abolished okay then they say that like i i dropped the 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 blood quantum used in like medical fields no i say that this is only about immigration what this means is that you don't understand my argument the harms link to immigration look at my case look at the day 2017 card look at the jackson 20 card look at all my links they're specific to the obstacles the native americans face in terms of immigration and not being able to get back to their land and once again you're going to extend this ncia 18 card they want the plan um okay then they say like um, like we don't solve like white supremacy. None of my links are predicated off of white supremacy. They talk about how blood quantum is a pillar of settler colonialism and that's what we're dismantling. Um, so maybe that's confused there, but I'm not trying, like none of my links, none of my impacts, this has nothing to do with white supremacy. It has everything to do with abolishing like the problem at the border, which is a form of white supremacy, yes. But obviously we're, we can't like get rid of the entire state in and of itself in terms of a policy act. Move on to the critique specifically, okay. So there's a lot of like, we're dropping the turns, we're dropping the utopian fiat, that's great. If Tyler did not spend more more than one minute on an argument you really shouldn't address it because collapse is key to not having like not having to continue watching these horrible like two ARs where we're overwhelmed but anyway you're going to be like once again voting on what Native Americans want. If the affirmative is genocidal logic, then you're telling Native Americans that they're the ones who have genocidal logic. Once again the NCA 18 card that specifically says that Native Americans advocate for the plan. They advocate for this abolishment of this horrible racist policy. You're going to be voting on what Natives want because they're not the ones with the genocidal logic. It's this policy that we're getting rid of. And because there's no alternative, because there's no action being done, that's why you're going to vote for the only action that actually takes a stand against this horrible genocidal logic in the status quo that is trying to eliminate Natives by saying you're not Native enough if you don't meet 50%. They completely drop our framework cards. That's the Abu Jamal and the Breen cards, which talks about how we need to prefer this ongoing violence of poverty and these other structural issues that's literally killing Native Americans, that's making them extinct. And the Breen 15 card, which talks about how people have like lost their culture because of this piece of, because of this horrible policy that is preventing them from accessing their spiritual grounds and their families. And then finally, the revolution impact is brand new. Look at the one, AC, one and C, sure, maybe it's hidden in a card somewhere, but it's not in, in like a tag. You evaluate our impacts first, you vote for what Natives want, thank you. Good round as always, Alicia. Yeah, good round. Congratulations. I assume, the judge, is a, I assume the judge is gonna take a little bit to deliberate, so I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, a uh, few minutes. <laughs> cool, yeah.
<laughs> oh, sorry, I was away from the computer. Uh, Lila, I'll send you my decision right now. Cool, thanks so much. Alex, you're done, yeah? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm in, and I was going to give a. Uh... Oh, can you can you private message? No, he froze. Oh yeah, just private message. Yeah, Lila or myself, one of us for. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, yeah private yeah, message, Lila. Legit, but I Go didn't ahead. know if we're talking live action or cartoon count. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna just uh, give a verbal RFD. I'm on my phone. It's very hard for me to like. Or make right, 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 right. But we need to know the decision. Movie and that oh, was oh, yeah. I, I, I voted for the neg. The, <laughs> the, okay, okay. Know. So that's what I was asking to be private message, so that so, Lila sure. could do the big grandiose congratulations. I think I was completely superhero. Thing. I, I thought. <laughs> I, I thought I, but but I it's, thought I, yeah, it's all good. It's I, all good. We I, know I your thought, decision. I thought I sent that out to to both of you. It doesn't show that. Though. I don't. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, Lila, why don't you yeah do what you were gonna do? I really like. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, good round to both of y'all. Congrats to getting to the uh, semifinals of what is this tournament called? The Hornet Cup. Uh, it was a fantastic round. It ended up being a three zero for the negative. Um, so I suppose I can go first since I am talking. Uh, I vote negative at worst on presumption and at best at the fact that the 1EC does not solve plus the 2NR is winning a tiny piece of terminal offense that weighs under the 2AR's extensions of its internal impact weighing and thus not only internally linked turns to the affirmative but also does so under the impact prioritization that the 2AR is extending as that which should direct my ballot. And here's specifically how my ballot gets written in this way. First and foremost, I just think that the 2NR strategy is incredibly risky. I understand the idea that kicking the alternative makes sense under the conditions that a you are winning terminal defense against the affirmative and b it's a good time trade-off to not have to answer the only AF offense against the criticism that said though putting yourself in a position in which nearly all of the two in our offenses collapsed to has no uniqueness given that the case uniqueness is generated by a metric of the alternative solving for the links and thus the terminal offense is incredibly risky because even if coming out of the two nr or two ar you are winning absolutely all of your offense on the line by line if the two ar is able to win risk of solvency plus framing for the one ac it's pretty much game over for the 2NR because you have no link uniqueness for any of your offense, uh, thus no, no, no offensive reason to vote negative, and the strategic value of all of your terminal defense goes away as well because the 2AR is just able to hand wave that through try or die framing slash risk of a link. So given that such is true and that is the strategy of how the 2NR unfolds though, that means I look to the affirmative first when working through this round plus formulating my ballot here, which means that given that nearly all of the debate on the 1AC takes place on this page, I look to the solvency section of the 1AC. Mm. 
doing so. I think that the 2NR is winning a couple pieces of terminal defense the 2AR is not quite grappling with. Um, those specifically being the Finch 16 evidence, the Rafani 20, and the NPR 17 evidences. To first start off with the Finch 16 evidence, there are two reasons that I don't think the 2AR arguments are responsive here. The first is the fact that the 1AC evidence slash plan is only in the context of resolving the American settler colony's usage of Euro-American blood ra racialization within immigration is irrelevant. If the larger structure of class slash national rule that requires such slash makes it possible is still materially baked into America's political economy as the 2NR's evidence seems to indicate because it indicates that all of the 1AC's offense about the brutalizing settler imperialist violence of blood quantums is still sustained by and thus not solved by the 1AC which is only intensified by the fact that the 1AC in either the 1AR or 2AR is not reading any offensive reason as to why resolving for the usage of blood quantum specifically within the immigration system is key or why it's an internal link to every other usage of it otherwise. Two, the 2AR is conceding a warrant weighing claim that the 2NR is making that I should err on prioritizing the negatives evidence that is in the context of the American settler colonies usage of the blood quantum on a structural level, for example, within health and education as the 2NR articulates over the 1AC's evidence that is myopic and only singularly in the context of immigration which in the 2AR conceding such preempts the 2AR's responses about why this is irrelevant plus gives me as a judge a framing mechanism for why I ought to prioritize the 2NR's analysis on the question. So that means that I think that the negative is pretty convincingly winning this piece of terminal defense. That means that the next place I look is the Sorfani 20 evidence. I similarly don't think that the 2AR is ahead on this for a couple reasons. One, it also, like, the argument that you make is that, well, none of my links are predicated on it, but you also then say, well, it is an example of white supremacy, uh, and the, the entirety of your analysis in the affirmative, and also just any material analysis of settler colonialism indicates that white supremacy is an inherent feature of settler colonialism, and the very reason that a white supremacy is baked into the American settler colony is because it's an integral piece, an ideological arm of anti-blackness and settler colonialism. But even if that were not the case, I think that the negative is also making an internal link argument in the 2NR that indicates that colonialism and white supremacy are necessarily imbricated within each other and indivisible from each other, which means that if it is true that the current system is grounded within white supremacy, then that means that there's an all cost to the affirmative that the affirmative is not able to resolve, which means that I think that the negative is also winning the Orfani 20 evidence. The NPR 17 evidence is also just cold conceded by the affirmative in the 2AR, which I think is particularly compelling given that it sort of produces a squo solves argument that articulates that uh, indigenous people are able to cross on their own. I also think that this argument is fairly strategic in reference to the 2AR framing that the affirmative tries to frame a lot of the 2AR for, that we should, uh, uh, you know, uh, default to what indigenous people want, i.e. the NPR 17 evidence seems to indicate that indigenous people don't want to abide by the settler legalistic regulations of who is allowed to cross in the specific uh, you know, settler mechanisms that indigenous people are violently forced into to be able to implicate, to be able to exist on their own territory, uh, which seems to at the very least be an impact defense takeout to the sort of way that the affirmative is attempting to leverage this framing against the criticism, or at the very least means that uh, the negative has an internal link to being able to weigh under this, and, and since that is not comparatively weighed by the affirmative, at the very least means that I don't think that that is an offensive reason as to why I prioritize uh, the affirmative, but a little bit more on that framing later. That means that I then look up to the Smith 17 evidence, which I think is the small piece of terminal offense that the negative is winning on the affirmative. The only uh, response that we get to this argument in the uh, in the two uh, or in the two AR is that it's not specific to the northern border. One, I just don't think that this is true because like indigenous people are detained at the northern border all the time, i.e., Coast Salish people who are split between the settler nations of Canada and America are oftentimes detained when they are trying to get back to their territory or visit their relatives. But obviously, this is an argument that the negative doesn't make, so I don't feel comfortable intervening on it. I also don't think I have have to because this doesn't seem to be relevant, right? Because the Smith 17 evidence seems to indicate that or like a migration and travel is increased through indigenous people writ large. And since the entirety of the plan, as well as the affirmative offense is not in context to specifically the northern border, but just writ large. And even if it is not specific to the northern border, the fact that indigenous people would be detained on every other border that exists uh, through the American settler colony would seem to trigger all of the offense that the negative is going for. And I think that the negative has at the very least a small uniqueness scenario here. Uh, in that it specifically articulates that the plane would increase travel, i.e. if the specific uh, barriers as a result of settler colonial domination and global uh, capitalism and imperialism prevent indigenous people from traveling and the 1AC story is true, then that would increase in, uh, travel, which I think the negative is winning necessarily triggers structural violence because of the Brenner, uh, uh, the Brenner Center 
21 evidence that goes conceded, uh, which I think is, you know, not only a straight turn to the affirmative in terms of the fact that it operates under their structural violence framing, uh, but I think it's also important when we get to the criticism. So that means that I look to the criticism. Um, I think that the mm-hmm. negative is just, uh, I think that the criticism ends up functionally just operating again as a linear disag, which sort of just serves as more terminal defense against the affirmative, right? Because I think that uh, you are extending in the 2NR this sort of first piece of Sharma evidence quite well, and I think that you implicate it very well, but absent an alternative, it is just a terminal, uh, or it's just a non-unique disad, right? Which means that at best it just functions as a solvency deficit, but I think that the way that you implicate it in relation to the affirmative is fairly persuasive and good, right? That's specifically the second justification sort of this extension that metaphysical claims to territory are always co-opted and an essential part of uh, the settler nation's attempt to naturalization of those of us Euro-Americans in the settler class as being indigenous to stolen and occupied uh, indigenous land. And I think that that seems to indicate that the affirmative, even if it is good, just gets co-opted by uh, reactionaries, particularly given the fact that the affirmative is, you know, a liberal strategy that sort of affirms the existence of the American settler colony in its political economy, which would seem to, again, serve as another piece of terminal uh, defense against the affirmative, which I think that then given that the affirmative, that the negative is winning this sort of small piece of uh, unique offense vis-a-vis the Smith and Brenner uh, Center 21 evidence would seem to be a reason to vote negative because if the affirmative is not able to solve, the affirmative gets co-opted and merely re-justifies settler colonialism, also just doesn't have access to its own solvency mechanism given the concession of, of all the specific terminal defense that I just described that they think the 2NR is extending uh, and the negative is winning a reason as to why under the affirmative's own internal impact framing that it extends the affirmative actually triggers structural violence, and I think that's a pretty compelling reason to vote uh, for the negative, given that the affirmative has no link uniqueness to any offense at the end of the debate. Um, So the next thing that I sort of sit on for a while is this framing that the affirmative goes for at the end about how we should vote on what indigenous people want, and that that given that that indigenous people have articulated that the plan is necessary, that's a reason to vote for the affirmative. I think that there are a couple problems with this framing, though. The first is that it seems fairly new, and it's also not justified right, um, which means that I think it's sufficiently on the flow is enough of a reason as to why I would not consider it because I'm not really sure why that is true or how that operates in reference to my ballot. What, how does that frame my ballot uh, in reference to understanding some of the uh, arguments that the negative is reading from indigenous peoples, right? How do I reconcile that? Which I think then also allows for me to uh, it's, it's at least comfortably politically intervene in this and that I just think that this is sort of a tokenizing and also bad analysis of the way that colonialism functions, right? I.e. the Red Nation has some pretty good analysis about how a material analysis of neocolonialism reveals that a lot of indigenous Indigenous people are folded into the colonial project in a particular way and end up advocating for uh, colonial violence because of either their neo-colonial class privilege or ideological uh, counterinsurgency and colonial propaganda, which seems to mean that this sort of uh, tokenization is not only not what indigenous people want, but also is given that it's not justified by the affirmative or implicated what that means in reference to uh, the affirmative means that I feel pretty sufficiently on not voting for it. And I think even if that is not true, the negative is winning arguments that indicate that the affirmative is not able to solve and also triggers colonial violence. So even if it's a question of uh, the necessity of falling under the self-determination and sovereignty of indigenous people, I think the negative is indicating that the affirmative is not a project of that, but rather the opposite of that. So even under that own framing, if I were to grant the affirmative access to that, I would just vote negative. Um, So that's my ballot. Thank you. And then my brain just goes, Uh, yeah, that was an excellent, wonderful decision. Um, Yeah, Yeah, so I basically... I basically vote along the same lines, um, I, and I'd like to echo the sort of like, yeah, baller, I risky move by the NR. This was a, a brave move by the NR, and I think it did kind of catch the 2AR up a little bit, because I think you do have the arguments there. You do have an out. Um, you do extend sort of the, the, the physical genocide advantage in your 1AR, and I think that's probably your better out in terms of like, how okay. I solve mechanism to kind of get you out of some of the solvency cards I rather than just the native one, the natives won it card, right? The, the tribes, Yay. the tribes advocate um, card from uh, 18, right? From, from solvency proper. I, I think that, that your advantage is probably a better place to kind of use yeah. that yeah. argument to your yeah. advantage in the two AR yeah. rather than just the, cause I, cause, cause uh, like Lila, I largely kind of consider those arguments in the two AR pretty non-responsive to some of the NR framing which I think is really excellent, um, specifically on uh, extending sort of and blowing up the non-unique disad um, that, you know, the K morphs into in the rebuttal. So, um, yeah, my decision, I'll just read it off. Uh, This is super narrow, super narrow round still, right? Like, it still took me a while to make this decision, right? 
Um, but I'm voting neg on presumption. So once the neg kicks the alternative and reads uh, the K as a disadd to the case, I have a K that turns an insolvent AF. So that's kind of where I kept going back to is to what extent do I um, weigh the risk of solvency, right? Because I'm like, oh, well, you know, there's no longer an alternative. So like the, the, the risk of solvency. And like I kept coming back to the fact that like you just were really, you just had such terminal defense on the solvency that couldn't really comfortably give the 2AR that. So I think the neg is winning some solvency defense and this case turn. Um, and the only real response I have kind of to most of these arguments out of the NR is the NR said I dropped that and I didn't, and you extend the same natives want the plan argument. Um, and I just don't think that that's really super responsive because the, 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 I think that the NR does a good job of giving you credit for your argument there, right? Like they, I think the, the, the NR basically goes, oh, okay, the, the, the one AR makes this argument and, um, and it's just not responsive, right? It's kind of the thesis, not that you concede them. Um, so I think you're, you're just pulling through ink there and I'm not giving you a lot of the weight there. And I also don't really know how natives want this is responsive to like, the increase of travel turn specifically. Um, so this is also the thesis of the K disad debate from the two AR, and I think that violence towards uh, other populations impact that's kind of there on the criticism is is still an argument that goes conceded in the one AR, and sort of it's it's because you spend a lot of your time focused on the permutation debate, and you kind of lose a little bit of ground there, specifically kind of reading these disads on T, which I guess I will get to a little bit. Um, so I think the 2IR gets to the linear risk, non-unique debate with just like a little bit too little time the 2AR to win my ballot. I think you get there, right? You, you, you sniff it out there right at the end of that 2AR that like, wait a second, it's a risk of solvency versus this linear to sad. Yeah. And I think that that should probably have been like the top of your app, right? That all I now have to win is that I have a risk of solvency and then work backwards from that. Um, so I think, uh, I think that was the out and, um, it was just way more risk of solvency framing is, was your out. Um, but like, that's the problem is, is you don't solve, right? So you need to win that you solve a little bit more clearly for me. And, and that's just where I'm at. That's my decision. Alex, take uh, it away. Yeah. Um, Lila and Perk did a great job of articulating things. <laughs> um, uh, just let's see. I have uh, increase in travel, make wins on structural violence. Um, just looking at kind of what hasn't been touched on. The for, for for me, one of the 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 yeah the, yeah, the initial. I mean, I, the initial framing car. The, yeah, the Mitchell seventeen evidence. Um, and 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 the way that the negative utilized that uh, within their K, uh, I think that the framing argument was was st uh, strong enough from 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 the negative for me to um, for me to to, to consider um, uh, the various case terms and uh, drop DAs. I have let's see what do I have written uh, that the Mitchell uh, Brennan fifteen the ANJ does not sufficiently answer. Um, uh, fr the framing argument from the name. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's really the only thing that I have to add uh, that hasn't been said. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, I mean for for me the that yeah that yeah for me the 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 the, the framing discussion with in the round really helped lean my ballot towards the name. Had that not been there, um, I almost. I, I probably would have voted for the affirmative, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, the in the in the one in the in the NR, um, you you, uh, you did a really good job of of uh, cross applying and discussing cross applying evidence and discussing, um, you know, this this increase in uh, how this increase uh, how you went on structural violence. Um, and how you went on kind of the, I can't think of the right term, but term, but um, kind of violence towards the the other. I can't think of like a, you know, but um, 
anyways, yeah, it, it was a well-done round on both sides and a, and a fairly close ballot for me, but yep. Thanks. Uh, thank you all for judging in great debate again, Alicia. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good luck, Tyler. Good round, y'all. Congratulations. Yeah, do you have no, no question, Alicia? Uh, it's good as well. All right, have a great one. Yeah. Uh, yeah.